Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we're going to have an afterlife conversation with Anna Nicole Smith. Now, if you've watched Above Life Channel here for a while, you know that I am not a psychic medium that is into drama. I'm not interested in drama or gossip. So you might be asking yourself, well, Anna Nicole Smith had a pretty volatile, tumultuous life. Why would Bridget be channeling Anna Nicole? Because one of her good friends I recently channeled actually brought in an energy that I feel was linked to Anna Nicole Smith. And in doing so, this incredible friendship provides an opportunity for us to connect with Anna Nicole in a different perspective, in a different way. And in the way that I channel, very sensitive, very genuine, there's definitely an energy of respect and integrity that will come through in our channeling with Anna Nicole. Now, who is that good friend? It was the wrestler, China. When I channeled her right in the very beginning of China's session, there was a big energy in the heart that was a very heavy hearted energy that felt like the loss of a child, a son. And the energy of a son kept coming up and China didn't have one. I learned after my channeling session with China that China and Anna Nicole Smith were very good friends. And that loss of Anna Nicole's son really hit her hard. And so I'm doing this because it's the right thing to do. All right, Anna Nicole, come on in. I am such a fan of Marilyn Monroe, as I am sure you are, especially with your look. I'm sure you've been compared to her before. Is that true? Is that, is that an accurate assessment? I don't know a lot about you, to be honest. I know some things, so I'll share that with the, the viewers, but it's a lovely to meet you. She says, thank you, thank you. She really is sweet, you guys, she has a, you have a beautiful like energy aura, a personality, a lot of pink energy around you, which is a very soft, gentle, nurturing, loving, motherly energy. I know that being a mother was so important to you, and I'm a mom myself, so I completely can resonate and respect you as a person and recognize that life path and, and your life as a human is very different than your afterlife experiences. And, and I think that you'll be able to give some insights to people that can really encourage them, you know, really encourage them for their life as well. So thank you for this opportunity. It's unique. It is unique for me to, to be interviewing you. So, so are you a Marilyn fan? Yes, of course. She said, yes, of course. Who isn't? Like, who isn't? Who isn't? And, um, so Anna shares that she has a very communicative in the heart chakra. In fact, you guys, I was going to wear this. Oops, here, let me show you. I was going to wear this, just a black um, sweatshirt over, kind of like sweatshirt, or over the top of my tank top. And I'm like, no, I needed to change it to something a little more bright. And so this pink jacket at fit is I went into my closet and dug it out because it popped into my mind. And it's totally an Anna Nicole thing. Your personality is very loving, like pink, loving, loving, love me, love me. There are definitely some similarities with you and Ms. Marilyn Monroe. And I know some intended because you like to have the contrast or the comparison, or not contrast, but the comparison to her. And your energy is really high, like I can feel it in the heart chakra, like I can feel the real, like anxious, anxiety, did you deal with anxiety? I mean, I know there was depression there, obviously with the loss of, your, of a child and oh yeah, very much anxious, anxious, very much, very much. Almost a paranoia she's showing me, like I'm literally, literally feeling like that, oh my goodness. So I wore this pink because I felt you with pink. I felt you with this bold, beautiful, bright colors and love, loving energy. So, so that was, um, the energy vibe I felt even before sitting down. And now I'm just, everything is really fast, you guys. Like, oh my goodness, there's so much energy in this heart space. Um, I'm gonna just try to breathe a little bit. She says, I didn't think I would get the opportunity to talk with you. She says, I didn't think that I would get the opportunity. And she says, and I understand that. I understand the, I understand the, the, um, the want to be away from 
the drama and the, the tragedy. And she's saying, I'm re I really did become a Hollywood tragic story, didn't I? I really did. She said, I really did. I did always want to be famous. I did. I really wanted to be famous. Ever since I was young, I always, you know, pretended. You know, when she showed me like modeling, like walking all fancy and being really drawn to beautiful things. And it feels like she grew up poor, didn't have a lot of money. And I feel like there was a parent missing. I don't even know if her aunt was involved because I see a different woman. I'm not sure what's going on here, how what I'm seeing. I see a mother, but I'm not sure. I feel like the mother is not, I don't know if it's on again, off again, or if the mom has like addiction issues or what's going on. And then I feel like there's multiple like stepfathers or boyfriends and that's not a good situation for Anna. And that she, she was always really special. It feels like, like she stood out in very similar to Marilyn Monroe, a lot of similarities. Um, you definitely have that star quality, but she had, I think the star quality is more of a desire for her to just be recognized, to be seen and appreciated and respected. And she said to be really powerful and beauty is power. You know, makeup, she says makeup, like she's showing me like advertising makeup and something unique about her lips. And I don't know if she got her lips done, but her lips is what I'm focused on. And I can see like beautiful lips and makeup and um, I know you were a guest model. I remember that part of your life. And I know you were also an actress and in Playboy. I know that. And I remember that you married a really much, much, much way older man and that there was um, conflict with you and his family. I know that as well, which is thus the drama. She said, see the drama, the gossip of the drama. And then she says, you can fault me for that, you can judge me for that, but I did what I needed to do to take care of myself and to make sure that I could have the kind of life that I needed to have in order to pursue my dreams. And it really looks like she wants to be a movie star, like a mega movie star, and that if she had a production company, she could do that for herself, or if she could you know, kind of buy her way into. It wasn't just for the luxurious things, although she liked that very much, it was more for the the power of fame the the being famous she really wanted to be this incredibly famous actress and very much like marilyn monroe i mean she really feels like that do you feel that your life parallels marilyn parallels marilyn's as well do you feel that and she says, oh yes, very much, very much. You guys, she sounds way more articulate than I, no, uh, no offense, please no offense, than I expected you to be. You seem very much more articulate than I had anticipated originally. And now the energy shifts and drops in. Okay. Very much, she says very much. But I didn't want to be just a sex symbol. I wanted to be very much, um, and she says, I wanted to be known as a beautiful woman, an incredibly beautiful woman. Just beauty is very valuable to her. She beauty, beauty is very valuable. She's showing me like being in pageants or something. Maybe that's how she got discovered. I'm not sure. And Midwest and then California. I don't know what that's about. I have no idea what that's about. And I wonder if she lived with an aunt or somebody. I feel like she's like in a rural or farm area. I have no idea if this is a movie she was in or if this is actually her life. I'm not sure. I'm seeing stuff. She's like showing me things. Remember, I'm clairvoyant, so I see. So I'm trying to make sense of the pictures and images I'm seeing. Whereas if I was talking with you guys and doing a session for you, I could ask you, what does this mean? What does that mean? And we could, that, that's how it works. It clicks together all the pieces, but can't actually ask her because she's not sitting in front of me like that, like you. So, okay, why are you showing me these images? Why am I seeing these images as I'm connecting with you? She says, to get a sense of who I am, I'm a real person. Like she was a real human being and that's what she, how she wants to be portrayed. And she says, you can judge me. She says, I'm not, I'm not ashamed or afraid of 
my past, my past at all. Everyone makes mistakes and I'm not going to waste my time in talking about those things when people are going to form their own opinions of you anyway. And if they think you're less than they are, then that's, their, that's what they're gonna believe. And it's ridiculous, like it's really not fair. She says, it's really just not fair. It's just not fair. The people that turn their nose up at you are people who aren't exactly living with scruples either. They're not exactly perfect themselves. I mean, it's their husbands or their wives that are the ones that are running around on them. So they shouldn't be afraid of, of what they can lose and blame you for that, is what she says. Have you thought about writing a book? Like a book would have been great. I feel like she says I did. So I don't know if there was a book that came after her life or if she wrote something during her life. I'm not sure, but there's a book, it says. She says, I can see that. Um, it's also I'm trying to go ahead. You can go ahead and show me. She's showing me your daughter. So does the book have something to do with her or your or her dad? Because I know that there was a thing about the dads. Like I know that there was one man that was supposedly the dad, but then he wasn't, and then the other guy got custody of her. I I remember that of your daughter after you, after your death. Is that what the book is about? Is it about that? She showed me that there's a man that wrote a book about her, like a kind of like a biography about her. But prior to that, she has, she says, my life is in pictures. I don't know what that means. I don't know if it's photographs or what, but maybe she, oh, there might've been an article about her like in Vogue or in some kind of magazine that she's referring to because in the book it's thick though. So it's like, so are there two? There's multiple things that I'm seeing here. So it, it is, there's like an article in a thick magazine about her that she's referring to that she had to a say in, but then there's also um, some man that wrote a book about her that she's just like, and it's about all the drama and stuff. And she's talking about the movie. Was there a movie made about your life? It feels like, the, yes, there was. It feels like there was, okay. And, okay, and then she's talking about her daughter being very gifted. Like she's saying her daughter could sing, not sing, um, her daughter can, she dances, I think. She's moving her, like she's very um, coordinated, coordinated. Like, I don't know if she's like, she's turning and twirling around. I don't know if she's modeling or if she's actually dancing. Like she's have, she's doing the, the things, you know, like um, poses or movements, which could be like ballet stuff or contemporary dance, or it could be modeling. She might be a model. She's young though. She's really young, isn't she? Oh, she's beautiful. She said, oh, she's so beautiful. So Anna, you left the earth because of a broken heart. That's how it feels to me because you missed your son so horribly. Can you talk a little bit about the loss of your son and what it means for you now in the afterlife? It was the worst. She said it was the worst time of my life. It was, I was like a walking zombie. And she says, I was like in a coma. I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. Everything was so hard. My, every part of my body was so heavy. And I know, I know it was grief, you know, I can see that now clearly, but it's so, you can't even imagine the pain from losing a child. It's such a horrible thing. I don't think I could have ever really recovered from that. And it's not the blame. I didn't blame myself. It wasn't about not being able to save him, but for not being able to be with him. It, it feels, you know, every mother wants to be with their, their children and when they need you the most, you just want to be there. And it's not really possible for you to know all those times when they really need you you know, when everything's really dark for them. And I knew he was going through some difficult times. I knew there was darkness. I knew he was fighting monsters and, and he had abuse, substance abuse. <sighs> Struggles, but he was, he was clean for a long time and, and I was so proud of his, him. And he really wrestled with so much that you would nowadays, you know, everybody talks about mental illness and it's much more, 
a topic of conversation where people recognize that. And I think there's more opportunities to help people. You know, it's like more okay to do that. And for him, I think he just, I think he just had enough. He just, the hardest thing for me is that, and this, it's so sad, it's just so sad, is that knowing that he was all by himself and he was just so alone and he felt so alone and he, he couldn't, he could, just couldn't reach for the light. And, and just knowing that, he was just so, so, so alone, so alone, so very, very, very lonely. It is, is the hardest part, that's the saddest part for me. And I couldn't get over that that feeling of him being so alone and not having any kind of hope. That is so, so hard for me. I never, I was never able to recover. I was never able to, I had, I had pills to help me go to sleep. I had pills to try to help me wake up and I just couldn't, I never, I never recovered. It looks like you guys, she fell into a deep depression is what it looks like. And she, it looks like she tried to do things, but she couldn't, she just couldn't do it. She just couldn't like, she says like a robot, you know, I, I just couldn't, I couldn't do it. And then she says, um, I died that day. When he died, I died. But my death was much slower than his. So when you left this plane, when you left yourself, did you, when you went into the afterlife, were you able to reunite with your son, Daniel? says, you know, the, th the thing is, is that it doesn't work how you think it's going to work. You know, it's not what you think it is. It's not like heaven is some place, you know, like an airport that you come off the airplane and you get to meet your loved ones. It's not. It, it wasn't like that for me. I saw my grandmother and I saw what you would consider angels and beautiful golden robes and white and just very it was so sunny you know like the perfect california day and i just felt for the first time in a long time i felt hope but i didn't see daniel right away i didn't feel him or unite with him like i thought i would and I just missed him so much. I just wanted to be with him. And it was a process for me to find myself, to let my soul be free from the grief and the sadness of my human life before I could actually recognize that Daniel was just part of the same of me and I of him and all of the oneness that you've talked about, you know, how you talk about that, how everything's one, it, it's true. That's exactly how it is. It's exactly how it is, but you can't really explain that to somebody with a, br a brain or a mind, you know? So I'm doing my best to describe it for you. It's really a, it's like a, it's like just this knowing, you know, this, it's not even a state of happiness. It's not bliss, it's not joy, it's not, it's not like that. It's just a feeling of wholeness, you know? But see, the thing is, is it's with everything. It's not just with one person, you know? So from a human perspective, you know, from the human, con uh, the human um, experience part, like the concept of being, she's trying to describe like how from being from our understanding as people, it's not the same. So she didn't like unite with him and he, meet, he greeted her there and that kind of a thing. It was different. So, but you did eventually unite and you, it's like an emergence, right? Like light merging with light, like the beams of the sunlight coming together as one. That's what you're describing. Yes. And she's like, yes. I, she says, I'm trying to. It, it's, it's, a real, it's a real challenge with human words, isn't it? It sure is. <laughs> It is, she said, it is. I don't know how to, I don't know how to describe it because I don't want people to be sad and think that I didn't get to see my son, but I also don't want them to think that that's the only way that I could have seen my son because I saw him. I saw him before that. I saw him in my, in my dreams. I saw him all the time. 
when I was on the, the medication and I'd have these like hallucinations, it's like hallucinations, you guys, like daydreams where she would see him and he, he was trying to save me. She says, I believe he was trying to save me from the pain that I was in from myself and he couldn't, you know? And so I just could, I couldn't bear the pain anymore. I just couldn't bear it. I just couldn't bear it. And I missed him so much. That's really hard to know, Anna, to know that you left and wanted to see your son and you left because you missed your son so much that you were just so, so sad and that in the afterlife, it sounds like you basically had some of your own healing to do and it wasn't like you missed him or you got, it wasn't like a a loss or a gain when you went to the other side. It was more like a becoming whole again for yourself. And part of that is that connection through the oneness. Is that, does that make sense the way I described it? Yeah, she said, yeah, yeah, it does. She said, thanks to my friend, China, because without her, I wouldn't be able to have talked with you. I don't think, I don't think you would have talked with me. It's not because I judge you. I don't really judge you. I just, I just didn't really want any of the drama and people can be so mean, you know? Oh, she says, oh. Oh, I know about that. How did you handle it when people were so mean to you and judged you so much? I mean, you're a public figure and, and people were so mean to you at times. And how did you deal with that? Like, would you have advice about that? She says, um, you can try to ignore it, but it's not easy to ignore it. You know, it's like people screaming in your ear. You know, she says, try not to read things. <laughs> Try not to read things about yourself, you know? And she says, um, press is press now. It's, it's not how it was before where, you know, something horrible would come out about you and then you would be done, your career would be over. And now it's just like a couple of news cycles and then it's fine again. And so you, you have to recognize that it's all part of the, the game that Hollywood is. And in your, but in your case, she says, like in your case, the social media, the social part of it, the, the internet part of it. She's like, um, everyone, everyone just has, everyone just has views, you know, everyone just thinks they know what's best for you, but that's not true. Mm -mm. That's not true at all. You have to just really believe in yourself and focus on your dreams and what matters to you because people are going to hate you and they're gonna be loud, and they're gonna be screaming at you, it's gonna feel awful, but those people don't matter. It's the people that like you, and that love you, and support you. Those are the people that matter. Those are the people that really matter. Okay, all right. Well, thank you for our conversation today. I know we've been kind of all over the place talking about a lot of different things. I think you did a great job trying to describe about heaven, the afterlife. I think that's, that's a great perspective to share with the viewers here at Above Life Channel. And so I, I thank you for that. I feel like you are a beautiful spirit. And in the afterlife, that beautiful pink energy, that nurturing, loving, motherly energy, I just, I wish that for you and continued healing on your journey as well. She said, thank you. Thank you for your kindness. She says, thank you for being kind. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. It's what we do here at Above Life Channel because we are a positive psychic medium channel. <laughs> and we connect with interesting afterlife celebrities just like you, Anna Nicole Smith. Thank you for being here and thank you for watching. I hope that this this interesting session has inspired your spirit and filled you with hope. Remember, this is your life, right here and right now. So live it, just live it. Thanks for watching.